Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale. On this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I want to show you how I like to make a chicken parm meatloaf. I shared a recipe, I shared a photo of my dinner not too long ago on Instagram and I had everybody asking for the recipe. So I'm going to share it with you today. It's really easy and simple, but it's really delicious and it's great for company. It's something that you can put together really quickly and everybody loves it. If you love chicken parm, which is the classic, you know, chicken, bread, chicken, well, breaded chicken, or um, just regular grilled chicken with sauce and cheese, and this is the perfect recipe for you, and you can make it for a lot of people in no time and no effort, and there's no frying, there's not a lot of bread going on, so it's lower in carbs, which I've been getting a lot of questions from you about wanting to see more low-carb recipes, and I'm going to start sharing them with you, but you do need a little bit of breadcrumbs to keep it all together, but for two pounds of ground chicken or ground turkey, you only need a half a cup, and it goes a long way. So, speaking of, let's go through the ingredients. You need ground chicken or ground turkey. Make sure it's not ground turkey or ground chicken breast. It's way too lean and it's not going to give you enough flavor. I've got a little bit of breadcrumbs and some Italian seasoning, an egg, some onion and garlic. I've got some pre-made marinara sauce here. You can use store-bought or homemade. Parmigiano Reggiano and a little bit of salt. And you're also going to need some more sauce and some shredded mozzarella for the very end, but not for right now. I've got my oven preheated to 375 and I'm ready to get going. It comes together like in five minutes. You just add everything in. So you've got your breadcrumbs and your Italian seasoning, one egg, marinara sauce. This is gonna be flavor, and it's also gonna just help you, instead of adding an extra egg, I just like to add a little bit of marinara sauce and it makes perfect, delicious, like juicy yumminess of a meatloaf. Then a good grating of Parmigiano de Giano. I'm actually going to use my coarse grater. A good grating of that. You want about, I don't know, about a quarter cup maybe, but you're also going to need some more for the top. I'm going to grate in some garlic. You can also go ahead and chop it, but if you've got sort of a one of these little rough, um, what is this? A grater. Thank you so much. Then two for one, because I'm also going to grate in some onion. I love that onion flavor that you would get like from a lot of marinara sauce on your chicken parm, but I don't want to chop it in here because it'd be too coarse. I also don't feel like sauteing it. So by grating it in, you get a little bit of that onion juice, a little bit of that onion flavor, but without any, like any work whatsoever. You just need about, I would say a tablespoon or so. And then just a really good pinch of salt. And then with your hands, you just go in and you mix it all together until it's well combined. Now, a meatloaf of this size is about two pounds of ground chicken or ground turkey, or whatever you choose to use. It'll feed, I mean, it'll make a good six to eight slices. So it goes a long way, and I'm gonna serve it with, um, you can serve it with pasta, of course. You can serve it with some cauliflower rice. You can serve it with just simple green salad and a loaf of baguette. I mean, it's just really a lovely, a lovely dish that you can serve for company or make it for just you and your husband or, you know, you and your partner or your family and keep the leftovers and make killer chicken parm sandwiches. But without the chicken parm, you're just using a meatloaf. It's just as good, if not even better. Okay. All right. That looks good. I don't want to overmix it. Bring my baking sheet closer to me. I've got a baking sheet with a little bit of olive oil at the bottom just so that nothing sticks. And now all I'm going to do is just form this into a meatloaf. Just like so. Okay, and then what I like to do, because I'm going to be topping them, topping this with some sauce, I just like to run my fingers in the center and kind of make like a little divot in the center. Like that because that way the sauce holds a little bit better later on. Now, a lot of people make meatloaves in a pan, right? Like in a, in a nine by five inch like loaf pan. I don't do that because I find it a little bit difficult to like cut the meatloaf and then, especially if I'm using beef, I like to do it on a baking sheet or even a slotted baking sheet so that the grease can fall through because if I don't do that and I make it straight into a loaf pan, then the meatloaf is swimming in its own fat and I don't want that. So if you've ever been curious as to why I never make my meatloaf, because I made a lot of meatloaf recipes. Um, if you've ever been curious as to why I just kind of make it this way instead of a pan, which I've gotten those questions before, now you know why. Okay, this looks perfect. I'm gonna pop this into my oven, which I have preheated at 375 for about 45 minutes. So I will show you what it looks like when it's there. I'm gonna wash my hands first. 
I'm going to pop it in. I just took my meatloaf out of the oven. It was in there for 45 minutes. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to top it with some marinara sauce. If it dribbles down the side, that is perfectly fine. And I also have some extra that I'm going to serve it with, just like that. And then you can top it with provolone, you know, asiago, mozzarella, a mixture of all of them. By all means, use whatever you have on hand, whatever you prefer. This is your meatloaf. I'm not telling you what to do. And then I'm just going to top it with some shredded mozz right along the center. Oh, how beautiful is that? That just make, makes me happy to look at it. And then freshly grated parm on top of there. And this is going to go back in for about 15 to 20 minutes or until all the cheese is melted beautifully. And I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. It's a real beauty, I promise. I mean, come on. Once I put the cheese on it, I put it back into the oven for 15 minutes and it is gorgeous and perfectly ready to go. Now what I have here is um, like the tray I'm gonna serve it in. I like to layer the bottom with some more marinara sauce and then I'm just serving it with some pappardelle, but you can use, like I said, whatever side dish you want, it's up to you. You don't have to use a side dish at all. My mouth is salivating. Uh, before I transfer, I just wanna cut myself a slice because I literally cannot take it anymore. It looks ridiculous. Let's cut into it. Oh, it's gonna be a juicy, gorgeous. Yes, yes, yes. Oh yeah, look how beautiful. Look how beautiful. I'm gonna steal some of the sauce in this cheese because why not? You know what I'm saying? I gotta cut into this right now. It gets like a really beautiful crust on the top. Mm. Oh my goodness. If you're really missing that crunch from a traditional, um, you know, like chicken parm, what you can do is you can put some panko breadcrumbs or regular breadcrumbs on the top of the cheese with a sp small drizzle of olive oil, and that'll give you a nice crunchy topping, but it doesn't need it. It's so flavorful. The meatloaf itself is so juicy. I mean, it's just it's perfection. It's absolutely perfection. Go to lauraimnickets.com to get the written recipe. I hope you enjoy spending time with me. Follow me on Instagram or social media if you don't, particularly Instagram because that's where I show where I eat a lot, you know, what I eat throughout the week and whatnot. And sometimes it's things that I've never shared here in Laura in the Kitchen, things that I just come up out of nowhere. And then you request it and then I share it with you. So it's a good way for you and I to have good conversations and then just kind of see what I'm up to from day to day. I hope you enjoy spending time with me and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.